Hey everyone, welcome to Surviving Ascension. Today we're going to work on staying connected and stop resisting our true self. Okay. So let's take a few moments to get everybody clear and elevated and all that good stuff. Make sure everybody's really clear for today. Perfect. And there was a significant amount of ego in the group. Um, I felt it like a blanket, a wet one. Now y'all know about those weighted blankets. Imagine if it was wet. That's what's on top of you. You guys are being, were being held down by this really significant weight, this ego, this, let's see if we can get a truth about what it's like, what it's for. Um, if I stop you from finding yourself, your connection, you're tuning into yourself, you know, whatever, however you want to phrase that, maybe you'll quit. How many days? This is something I've seen so many times. You guys know, you guys all know by now I've been doing this for a very long time. I have been doing this with so many clients, uh, students that I've seen this many times. When I find a challenging time, when someone comes across a challenging time, they'll stop if only for a day or two, but then that day passes and then that second day passes and then it continues third and fourth and 10th and 20th day. And they're like, Ben, I haven't tuned in for 20 days. And I'm like, well, no wonder your life is having a struggle moment. Like you're struggling right now. You don't want to do that. I have asked so many students so many times before or after when you are having a struggle, like a struggle in your life, does it get easier when you don't tune in or does it get easier when you tune in? What are these, which of these two is the most effective at helping you through it? Obviously the tune in, right? But if I throw a wet blanket on top of you and a wet weighted blanket, a gravity blanket on top of you, it's a lot more reason not to do it. It's really hard. It's difficult. It's more difficult than anything's been so far, or at least up to this point. You guys know we've in, we've entered into a squeeze. If I'm not mistaken, not entirely sure, the 12th of this month. Really? Squeeze, weighted, wet, heavy blanket, and not tuning in? Keep going. Do whatever it takes to get through this situation. I have a course. I'm pretty sure it's $10. I'm almost 100% sure it's 10 bucks called um, Energetic Sprays. I don't often like to recommend people use tools, but if you're struggling, use tools if it's the only thing that can get you out of it. Energetic Sprays, Organite. Um, you know, grounding, everything, somebody else helping you. It doesn't matter. Do what it takes to get out of this space. Luckily, I've just removed this, this weighted, you know, heavy wet blanket off of you guys, but that's not going to be the only time something like this happens, right? The truth we're going to integrate into this space before we can even move on to resisting or stopping resisting is you are in control. The weighted blanket is not in control. Your ego is not in control. You are. The truth that we're integrating is you being in control, you can pull yourself out of it. You might think that a call like this can help you, and it can, but at the end of the day, the only one who can help you is you, right? So let's everybody take a moment right now and clear our egos. Even though I've done it for us, just do it again. Now that your egos have been cleared, I'm going to elevate everybody's perspective again. And if you know how to do that, please do it now. There we go. That was a significantly better experience for me. In fact, I have arm vibrations happening right now. I can grab my life by the reins or the horns or whatever phrase you want to use. I'm going to be the master of my own destiny. That's where we're going to say this. I don't want to say control. I don't want to say any of those negative words anymore. I'm going to be the master of my own destiny. That's what I feel right now from you guys. Okay. Let's do anything else I can do to remove anything. Um... There was a lot more in you still. This was something that was a little bit external, a little bit more, a little bit something that you guys didn't look for. And it was also covering your house, your space, your car, you know, wherever you're at right now. And it looked to me like, <laughs> I love this. Remember, if you guys remember back into when we were kids, different times, of course, but they had the parachute in gym and we would all swing the parachute up and let the parachute fly back down. There was a 
parachute on top of you. It wasn't helpful. We're not falling. We're not skydiving. Why would there need to be a parachute on you guys? Blanketing your house. Different than a wet blanket. That was on you, and that was very heavy. This parachute thing was blocking everybody in your reality, everybody in your house or your car or your job or wherever you are right now. There is a parachute limiting your perspective, keeping it to where you can't see anything. It's completely above you, and you look above, and you're just like, hey, there's nothing above me. I can't vibrate higher. So I have pulled that off of you. My recommendation, of course, is that you always spend time clearing, clearing your space, and elevating your perspective, bubbling unconditional love. Center of your being, expand it out. Okay. Anything else before I move on? Awesome. So let's go ahead and start with the first block we have in the way of us being our true self completely, staying connected, even when things are a little bit more difficult, right? Let's see here. Okay, the first block that's coming through is I see you all walking on a tight, a high wire, like a tight rope. And you're kind of like precarious, you're tipping back and forth, and you're like, oh, I'm going to fall down. Okay, well, let's explore this for a moment. What does falling down mean? Because if you've seen me and you've heard me teach long enough, if you've heard me teach at all, for the longest time, I've always said you can't really go down. There's only ups and plateaus, ups and plateaus. But Ben, this down energy feels really bad, much worse than before. Was well, because you're more sensitive now. So every plateau, every like stuck in a space that you are, feels like it's extra heavy because you're much more sensitive now. So I'm on a high wire, I'm on a tightrope, and I'm about to fall. First and foremost, know this, it's not possible. But that doesn't make it feel any better, right? It still feels just as difficult. So what do we do in those moments? We just talked about it when we did all our clearing stuff. What do we do? We keep going, okay? I just gave you a bunch of tools. Clear, clear your space. Elevate your perspective, bubble yourself with self-love, essences or sprays, um, organite, even crystals, nature, the sun, trees, a friend. I've just listed 10 items. Stop wallowing. It's a choice now, right? Now that we understand it, it is a choice. So if we're having difficulty in our realities and we understand it now, let's get out of it. Okay? We are... The masters, I was trying to say it in a better way of control, we are the masters of our destiny. And it is not in my destiny to suffer. Is it in yours? I hope not. Now that we understand this, though, it is in your power to change. Now, some of you might have taken courses, you know, years ago, five days ago. I might have met you yesterday. You might have known me for 17 years. I don't know. But here's the thing. Now that I've repeated this time and time and time again, you might have needed it that many times, that, re that repetition. And that's okay, right? Every time I, you, not me, every time I experience a difficulty in my life and I don't learn, I'm going to get it again. Repetition. I have told you this how many times now? It's okay to still need some help. So if I have to say it again next week and again the following week, I will. And that's okay. But what's up to you is, is it time to take it and move past it? Or is it not? Now, I suspect everybody in this call is going to say, of course it's time. I don't want to deal with this anymore. This is too much effort, too much difficulty. I've always said, it takes more energy to suffer. So let's not do that anymore, right? We get to choose. Raise your hand, at least those of you that have cameras on, if you want to suffer. Eduardo said, thumbs down. Raise your hand if you have your cameras on, if you want to grow. Do we want to take the time? Do we want to put in the energy, the effort? Are we worth it? Raise your hand if you're worth it. Let's integrate all that in. Okay. Um, so this, this Dina Shun is coming through is a little bit esoteric. I don't really know how to explain what it is other than saying you are wise, 
by that I am trying to indicate that you are as a soul, very old, right? I cannot tell you how many lifetimes you've cycled. I have no idea. Hundreds, thousands, millions, billions, trillions, no idea. But you got this. This isn't your first go around. This isn't your second go around. And I could repeat third, fourth, fifth, 20th, a thousandth. This isn't that. You've done this enough. You can get through this. You've done this before, okay? So this DNA strand symbolizes that you are a wise, old soul that knows exactly how to get through these things. This is that kick in the butt you needed. This is that reminder. Okay? Let's integrate that into every level. There we go. This one removed a lot of remnants and stagnation from your beingness, and it looked kind of, you know, oof, gray. Um, we were talking about weighted blankets earlier, you know, water usually having a very intense weight to it. It came out of you like gray, I don't know, like sludge almost. I don't know how to explain more what it looked like other than just saying like gray mud. I don't know. It was very thick, very dense. Now in dense, in the word of, in um, using the word dense indicates it weighs a lot. So if you're trying to raise your vibration, you're doing a heck of a time. You're, you're working extra hard trying to lift up this heavy, 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 dense weight. Those of you that have cameras on, have you felt that weight, that denseness? I was going to say density, but that's not the same word. <laughs> have you felt that weight in any area of your life? Even if it's just your emotions, your money, your health. So the DNA strand that helped to remove this weight was you've done this before. You can do it again. And you can always, if it was a game, win, right? It's not really a game, but we'll use that phrase. So let's integrate this strand. I think I might've already done it, but let's just make sure it's all fully integrated. Uh, it's integrated. There we go. What was the takeaway from that? What was the one thing that you take away from what we've just discussed? We did a lot of talking, but there was one piece that was really important to remember. Keep going, keep going. We can do it. We got this. We know what to do. I'm on purpose. All of those are pretty much the same. The takeaway in this case was, you've done this before, you can do it again. That doesn't mean that, to, that doesn't mean to expect to have to do it again. But if it comes up, you've done this before, you can do it again. You are not weak. You are strong. You are invincible. You are indestructible. Like, I don't know. The words are escaping me. You're infinite. Right? Who isn't? Raise your hand if you're not infinite. <laughs> I was like kidding. Don't raise your hands. Anyway, that is who you are. Stop resisting the fact that you are something. In this case, infinite. You might feel like your existence boils down to just this life, just what's happened to you since you've been born. But understand that there's so much more to you. I've, I can give you guys an example of this. My brother never really met his father. He, long story. Um, with that being said, he met him when he was less than a couple of months old. One time, maybe twice, I don't know. However, my brother and his father act identical. I act nothing like him. My, he's, we obviously he's the same father for both of us. I act nothing like him, but my brother and him are identical, but they've never really met. Why is that? Because you're so much more than your lifetime. My brother obviously got a bunch of DNA from his dad, right? So understanding that you're so much more than what your lifetime has shown you. Your past lifetimes make up a part of who you are too. Your family makes up a part of who you are. 
Your choices make up the most significant part of who you are. You're not just what's happened to you. In fact, that has nothing to do with who you are, unless you let it be. This is something that's plagued me forever and ever and ever. I don't know if this is movies or if this is in real life, but there's always this concept of, you know, we're in school, for example, high school musical or just whatever, but your life changed so drastically after the musical, post-musical, pre-musical. It's like, no, I'm who I am all the time. I literally have seen that in movies and shows. Like your life changed so much after this and before that play, blah, blah, blah. It's like, no, I am the same. I'm recognizing more of who I am now. And that's what I'm hoping for all of us. But I am not my life. The experiences that I've had over the course of my life shaped me, sure, but they didn't limit me. That's, this is a bad example, but I want to do it. You've probably heard of the concept of somebody being attacked by a large animal, going forward, being afraid of large animals, right? That is up to you. You get to choose that. Is it now your personality to be afraid of large animals because you were attacked by a large animal before? That's up to you, right? So choose what's in your highest good. Why did that happen? How do I never let it happen again? But I don't have to be afraid. I created that. Let's integrate everything that was truth. The strand of DNA was interesting. It looked like a, what do I call this? Um, I don't even know how to explain what this looks like to you. What this, I'm gonna have to Google it, I don't know. <laughs> I spelled it right, but I don't know how to pronounce it, hold on. Brazier. Brazier, a portable heater consisting of a pan or standing or stand for holding lighted coals or fire, a brazier. Anyway, what it's symbolizing is you are the brazier. You hold the fire. The fire moves. It flows. It moves. It jumps. It wiggles. It does whatever, right? It's not stuck in one single place. It flickers. So the DNA strand symbolizes constant change. Eh, that sounds bad. No, let's not say that. Let's say it symbolizes the change for the need to grow, the sake of growing. Not change for the sake of change, but change for the sake of growing. Fire always flops and flows in ups and downs. I don't like ups and downs either. That's a terrible way of phrasing it, but it's what it does. Janice, my experiences have shaped me, but they do not limit me. I love that. That's my new mantra. <laughs> yes, your experiences have helped you get to where you're going, but they didn't stop you. We're letting it stop us, though. The DNA strand of the fire is, of the brazier, is that we are perfection in a body. I always talk about when my intuition boosters are being done, candle lights that never go out. Well, now we've expanded that candle light. It's no longer a candle. It is a brazier. <laughs> what are these, about this big? We're a lot more formidable. We're growing. We're increasing in our vibration. Right? Let's integrate Perfect. Awesome. Let's take a look at the next block. Okay. The next block is one that I've cleared a couple of times before, which doesn't mean it didn't get cleared. It just meant that we're more into, we're, we're moving more into that space than we were at before. And more of our true self is becoming visible to us. The block is showing to me, um, this pretty much cave. It's like a very long tunnel cave thing. Um, and I'm holding a torch, but it's only lighting around me. So I lit up the area around myself and I don't know how far I have to go. What if I have to go forever? What if I have to go for 10 more years? Or I'm talking in this earthly life, not in our souls, like our evolution. Let me ask you a serious question. Ego, answer. Do not give me a truth, answer. How much more can you take? Take a look at this, you know, the experiences that have, you know, shaped you. How many more of those experiences can you take in an ego's perspective? How much more are you willing to take? Nothing. 
No more. No more. Seemingly consensus. We don't want any more, right? But what does that mean? Because what it looks like in the block is that it's happening around you and you have no choice but to deal with it, right? You're trapped in a cave. You can't do anything. Okay. What if I was to tell you that this cave is an illusion? It looks solid. And you put that illusion there. What if I was to tell you that? How does that make it feel for you? How does that change? You've created an illusion, a cave, long, dark, who knows when it'll end, and you've placed yourself right into the middle of it. We've just, we've just explored that we can't take anymore, right? How much more of this dark and empty cave can we actually take? No more. You know how to solve that? Take the freaking cave off. <laughs> <laughs> walk through the wall. It's not real. It's not solid. So what I've just explained to you is that the heavy weighted blanket and now this cave and anything else that's come up with this, you know, theme is fake. It doesn't exist. The phrase that we've all heard is you are standing in your own way. Why? I want an answer. And I'm probably not going to get one because I don't think any of you know why you're standing in your own way. But why are you standing in your own way? Maybe someone has an answer, an ego answer, obviously. Why are you standing in your own way? So we can grow. That's if you can just figure out that you're standing in your own way and you don't want to push yourself aside or walk through the cave or take off the heavy blanket, fear of success. What does that even mean? What is success? I'll tell you why you're standing in your own way. The real reason. We want to change for the sake of growth, right? We're afraid of change. If things start to change, Larry said it, because we are we are comfortable. If things start to change, we are going to feel so uncomfortable. Who knows what will happen? You'll become homeless. You'll have no food to eat. Everyone around you will die. I don't know what our egos are thinking, right? But that's what we're afraid of. We're afraid of it not being the way that it's been our whole lives. I'm willing to take some crap. I'm willing to take some, and I don't want to use a bad word, but some S as long as I know what I'm getting into. I trust the S, the crap, because I understand it. Well, can I look back at your life now, all the times that crap has occurred in your life? And I'm not trying to be rude, but it's probably happened a lot. We've just discovered in this call, we don't want to do it again. But we've also just discovered that I'd rather have that than be uncomfortable. What one do we want? Because I can tell you that there are absolute consequences to both of them. Consequences of the comfort zone are crap. Consequences of the other one is freedom, change, growth. And you might think in your perspective, in ego's perspective, I guess, that what that means is that your personality is going to change and your being is going to change and your life's going to change. I see Eduardo and Vivian up there. You guys are going to get a divorce. You guys aren't going to like each other anymore. That's what change looks like, right? Yeah, I'm afraid of that. Who said that? Who said that that's the consequence of change? Not I, not you. I'm looking at all the people whose camera's on. I'm looking at your faces. And I see people shaking their heads and I see people acknowledging what's going on. It's like, hey, guess what? It's a, it's a scary thing to have to do in an ego's perspective, covered with this heavy weighted blanket, this parachute. Let's take it off. We've already done that. Now we can see that that change isn't scary. 
I will be honest. Not everybody around you is going to get the change. They're not going to understand it. That might be scary for you. I've talked to many of you about this. What about my husband? What about my wife? What about you? When you have babies, do you coddle them and lift them so they don't have to walk and chew their food for them so they don't have to chew, dress them? I'm not talking infants. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking like three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 years old. Do you lift their arm for them? They have to learn, right? So did you, so did I. Mama birds throw their baby birds out the nest to teach them to fly. You don't help your partner by not helping you. It doesn't work that way. Did I just make sense when I said that? Did you hear what I said? You don't help your partner by not helping yourself. Think about that for a moment. I'll give you a few seconds. Put into perspective, what are the things that I could do to help myself? Self-love. Unconditional love. We'll grow from self-love to unconditional love. I think that sounds better. So now we've come full circle back to the concept of change again. And we're saying, well, Ben, I was always afraid of change before because of this and that and the other thing. Now I'm like, hey, I was actually really afraid to change because the one thing that I was going to lose, non-truth, the one thing that I was going to lose was the people around me. I don't want to be alone. I don't know about you, but I don't have anybody else in my mind. I have Ben in my mind. I don't have Vicky. I don't have Marina. I don't have Sweetgrass. They're not in my mind. But you know what is in my mind? My stuckness, my ego, my complaining to myself, my self-deprecation. That is in my mind. And how do I get out of that? Breaking free of the comfort zone and growing. Someone, potentially somebody who has a partner, why are you afraid to be alone? I'm ego. I'm talking about your ego, not a truth. Maybe you'll be like, I'm not afraid to be alone. Ego is. Why? Tell me if you have an answer for that. I'm not saying divorce. I'm not saying any of those things. I am saying fear of growth because of a fear of being alone. Why are we afraid to be alone? And then some of you may not even have a partner and you don't like being alone. So you need, I need a partner. So I'm not alone anymore. Fear of rejection, need help when sick. That's a very physical, tangible, like I get that. Depends on the people. Looking outside of yourself for fulfillment. Vicky, I think you hit it. And I think that's a very, oof, um, how am I going to phrase this? The concept of marriage is poorly put together in the world today. It's really just not correct because that happens. I get my fulfillment by making sure you feel fulfilled. It's like, what the hell does that even mean? It makes no sense to me. Guess what? If I fulfill myself and you fulfill yourself, we're both fulfilled. Eduardo, I am small, incomplete. Elena, ego, survival. Being alone meant death. Back in the prehistoric times, we used to be eaten by saber-toothed tigers. I don't see those around anymore. Unless we're at a museum, maybe. <laughs> oh, Vivian or Eduardo, I don't know who. Better half. It is a phrase. Oh, my better half. Do you see the damage the societal, societal belief of marriage has caused? Someone, I think it was Vicky, asked me, what does marriage look like in the next density? I can tell you, it's not what we've got right now. Not that that person won't be there, but what we have today is not going to be what we have in the future, in the next density. I can assure you of that. Because under no circumstance is your higher density, higher vibrational self going to be like, oh, I need someone else to complete me. Julie, you talk about having children. 
interesting thing in the fourth density. I don't know if I've said this before, but the fourth density, the way that we raise children is more of a, is like a, I don't like the word, but we're going to say tribe. Um, yeah, Vicky's birthed a kid, but we're all parent, parent, parents of some sort. We all provide something. I don't know what that looks like. I don't know whose house the kid stays at. I have no idea what that looks like at all. But I do know that it is very community. So we've broken free of the, sh the shackle, this chain of, I need a better half. I need somebody to help validate me and fulfill my life, or I need to help validate them and fulfill their life. We've just broken free of that, right? We've now realized that where we're moving, <laughs> we've now realized that where we're moving is community. So why don't we start to introduce the concept now? And I'm not talking with kids, I'm talking with ourselves, realizing that if I am having difficulty and I've tried my best to get out of it, let's ask for help. I said, use whatever tools you have at your disposal and a friend is one of them. We have to experience this lifetime on our own because it is our lifetime. Our lessons are ours, right? But that doesn't mean I have to suffer. I can ask if I have a friend for help. Anyway, let's take a moment to integrate everything that was true that we can integrate into every level of our being. You guys are absorbing this. You're like, Wedi, let's go. Can we not get there now? Why? Because where we are is hard because we're stuck in a comfort zone that we don't want to break free of? Did I just trick you all? You can have it here. You don't need it there. Create it for yourself. Everybody that I at least know is searching for their tribe, their community. It's a whole concept in the world today. There's songs about it, whole stories. but you don't have to wait till fourth density to find your tribe. You can find it today. How do you do that? I want one answer. I want everybody to answer, but I want one specific answer. How do you find your tribe? How do you find that community? Please guys, give me this. <laughs> I'm, I'm saying, I'm hoping you guys have remembered what I am. Saying. Okay, you're getting close, pretty damn close. You guys got it. You guys know me. You knew what I was looking for. You guys knew what I wanted. You find your tribe by finding yourself. You will not find somebody who's similar to you unless you put out what you're looking for. Now, what did we just discover we've been putting out? Fear of change. Well, then we're never going to change to the new version where we put out love, peace, whatever, and get it back. You guys just, I, that made me so happy when you guys knew what I was thinking. I don't know if it was because you guys have seen me thousands of times or if I was just, you know, that, what is the word, obvious, but I'm happy that you guys got it anyway. Let's integrate that into every level. To receive, I have to receive by putting out what I want. Yeah, don't put that out anymore. So what do we put out instead? Love, 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 self-love, unconditional love, love, any type, any type of love. Let's integrate that into every level. We get a strand of DNA coming through. It's a little fuzzy, but I'm gonna clear it. Let's see if I can get it a little clearer. So basically it comes down to the concept of to celebrate yourself. I don't need to celebrate Vicky because Vicky should celebrate herself. Mara doesn't need to celebrate me because I should celebrate myself. I am not talking about birthdays. They're for you anyway. Right. But I'm talking about me. Celebrate myself. I am worth it. Infinitely worth it. So let's integrate that into every level. And to be honest, it looks like a tiara. It's a little bit more on the feminine side, so sorry guys, but um, it looks like celebrate ourselves. Girls get a tiara, guys get a beautiful presented and jewel encrusted sword. I think that's what they used to get back in the 
older days, they used to make these swords with really pretty jewels in them. That's the strand of, that's what we're integrating though. Celebrate you. I have a serious question. Who am I going to ask? Hmm. I think I'm going to ask Christine. Why are you worth celebrating? Because I'm, um, I'm love, because I'm unconditional love. Thank you. That was exactly what I wanted. Let's integrate that into every level. Anchor it all in. Perfect. Sad news, but we come to end of the end of the call. Your higher self said there's nothing left for us. I feel lighthearted. I feel good. <laughs> Intuition booster. We're going to assume that all animals are born or like hatched out of an egg. Okay? We're going to fly off to another planet, and we're going to have three eggs in front of us, each with new animals in it. And we're going to see what those animals look like. We're going to create a whole new animal in and of itself. Okay? Awesome. So go ahead and what are we going to do? Okay, just close your eyes. As always, find that soft center within yourself. It's no longer a candle, but a brazier. Jump into that flame. And on the inside of that flame, you'll find a doorway. Remember, everything in this flame is unconditional love. It is you. Once you're in that flame, nice and settled and comfortable and feeling that love, I want you to open that door. And in front of you, you'll find a table with three eggs perched in a little, I don't know, thing that holds them up sitting in front of you on the table. Notice the room around you. What does the table look like? What color are the eggs? What does it smell like? How is the temperature? Are we in a room? Is it windy? Maybe we're outside and on grass. Go ahead and walk up to the first egg. And it's just so happens to be the perfect time because the egg's ha ha uh, hatching right in front of you. Watch as this animal comes out. Did you hear it crack? Is it a bird-like creature that's chirping? Is it not a bird-like creature? Maybe it's making other kinds of noises. What does the fur look like? Does it have feathers? What color is it? How big is it? Let's take a step to the right now. Look at the second egg. Looks like this animal wants to come over to the middle egg. Doesn't want to be alone, wants some friends. Perfect timing because the second egg is now hatching. Does this need a little help? Maybe you want to help it along by grabbing a little bit of the shell. I don't know. What do you see? Once again, what kind of animal comes out? Bird-like, not bird-like, feathers, fur? What color? Keep a, make a, stay aware of the noises around you, the feelings around you. We're gonna take a step again to the right and we're gonna look at the third egg. Both animals decided to move over to the third egg. They wanna have a friend. Perfect timing yet again as the animal starts to hatch, the egg starts to hatch.
What are you seeing? What are you hearing? What I want you to do now is I want you to intend that those animals get to pop off into the universe wherever their mother is and appear right next to their mom. We're not leaving them alone in this case. We're very animal friendly here. And once they've popped off, I want you to turn around, walk back out the door, and slowly come back to me. Now, if you know me, you know I need to hear what you guys saw. Unmute yourself and share with me what you got. Okay, I'll go. Awesome. Um, the first one was um, the egg was white um, with blue specks on it. And what came out was um, a puppy looking thing. Um, Lots of fur um, with bright, bright, piercing blue eyes. And um, that's pretty much it. I kept jumping around looking kind of not like a newborn puppy where the eyes are closed, but like came out three months old or something. I mean, <laughs> and then went over to the second one. The second egg was bigger than the last and it was blue. And what came out was imagine a panther but like instead of black fur, it was um, iridescent blue and it had wings and the wings were like orange in the middle and then blue on the outside. And then the last one was, it was a bird-like thing. Um, the egg was yellow um, and it was a bird-like, but instead of regular wings, it was like, um, butterfly wings it's really kind of crazy and then when you said have them go off to be with their moms the middle one actually came over and stood next to me and then I saw like a panther like creature with wings much bigger standing next to me and as I was walking out the door they were following me and I was like what's that all about and I heard that the panther was my spirit animal. Mm. Anyway, that was it. Awesome. I loved it. Thank you for sharing. Hmm. Anybody else? That was exciting. <laughs> no one? I Do guess it. I'll share. Perfect. Hi. Um, so the first one, it, it was weird because the eggs were on stands to begin with in this dark room. And then we just kind of like flew out and we were outside and they all settled into this nest on the ground. One was blue, one was a dark brown and one was a beige color. And um, the blue one opened up first and it was kind of like, all I could see was this eye kind of looking at me for a little bit. And um, like it was trying to decide whether it wanted to come out or not. And when it came out, it was a, um, a little dragon and it was purple and it came and it immediately kind of hopped up on my shoulder. And then it just stayed on my shoulder right next to my neck. Um, and then the next one was the, was the, um, the beige colored egg and, and it kind of like exploded open. It didn't just like peck open, it exploded open because it was like she unfurled, first of all, it was her horn came out and then she kind of like, and then she popped out, like she unfurled, she had wings too. It was a, like an iridescent pearl white unicorn with, um, with these beautiful, like these huge lacy wings. Like you could never figure out how that all fit into the egg. And then she just stood right next to me, leaning on me. And, um, and then the last one that opened, um, was a, it looked just like a normal leopard. 
and um and it and it and it like came out and it was really shy and it just kind of wrapped around my legs and wrapped itself around all of us and then when you said to let them go I could see their parents but they didn't want to go they it was like they went and they stayed at the same time um so it was kind of like they wanted to be with me and they had but they had their own kind and they could go back and forth at, at any moment so it kind of feels like they're still here i love that <laughs> yeah that's great thank me you too all right, let's see if you can see what people are chatting in. Ah, a dragon, a wombat, and a possum. Oh, I love possums. They've got such cute little faces. Um, I kept hearing, I am just here to love you. I do not need anything from you from all three eggs. First one was similar to a baby chicken. Then it was just uh, sparkles. And the last egg was a green light. Teresa says, they represent new birth, my sparkling and green healing light. Oh, that's cute. Uh, one was a dinosaur, two was a turtle, and three was a cat. You guys are fun. I love this. We've discovered, um, what are we going to discover? We may have discovered our spirit animals. Who knows? And if you did, enjoy it. Awesome, everybody. With that being said, I will see you all hopefully tomorrow on my consciousness, what is it called? Consciousness shift call? Conscious shift? Um, have a beautiful day, okay? Bye, everyone.